right, so this is our September, I'm sorry, August, <laughs> I'm getting a month ahead of myself, August 16th, um, T, teaching and learning and UX meeting. And um, today, uh, I don't have a whole lot of announcements. Um, the SakaiCon recordings, just as a reminder, those are available if you didn't make it to SakaiCon last month or you didn't make it to all the sessions and you'd like to watch some that you missed. Um, the recordings are available on YouTube and that link is there in the, um, the Etherpad. Um, also, um, the Sakai virtual conference planning is underway. So um, we're working on uh, the next event in our kind of cycle of events <laughs> throughout the year. So um, right now we've tentatively selected November 15th as the day for the virtual conference. We usually have it in November prior to, um, you know, the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, does anybody here have any conflicts with that day? Just as you know, kind of a quick check. I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so. Okay, Jennifer says no. Jeremy, how about you? Is the 15th of November okay for now? I'm trying to pull up my calendar. I, I don't have multiple uh, uh, screens, so hang on just a second here. November 15th. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, that looks fine, Wilma. Okay, great. Um, so we're looking at, at that date, um, and I'll be sending out a save the date announcement soon. Um, if not this week, then next week, just to get it on people's calendars. Um, so if, if you'd like to help, let me know if you want to join in with some of the planning. Happy to, to have folks help out. Um, and let's see, I think that's it for announcements. Does anybody else have any announcements? Okay, so we did not have a, um, a set topic for today. So when we do that, we usually default to JIRAs. So, <laughs> so we'll go ahead and start looking at some JIRAs. Let me, let me do a quick screen share. Just so we have something to look at. Um, all right, so I'm sharing my screen. You guys should be seeing it over here. Um, so let's actually go to JIRA and hang on one second. All right, so um, let me do, actually we have, I'm gonna go to our Confluence page because we already have a filter built into that page. So this is down you know, here at the bottom. These are um, items that have been tagged as teaching and learning. So out in a new window. Okay, so these are um, any of the results to that particular filter. So it's looking for feature requests um, that are labeled as teaching and learning. So these are items that people wanted to get some teaching and learning input on. Um, does anybody have a favorite, you know, one they would like to, to bump up to the top of the list? It looks like we've gotten through our backlog. We had a few in there that had carried over, but we got to them all recently. So um, does anybody have a particular one or should I just pick them at random? So, Wilma, well, I'm just curious, the ones that you have pulled up here uh, are... Are they ones that have been adopted? Is that kind of what you're looking at? This is just a filter in JIRA to pull up any feature requests, issues that people have submitted. And we can look at the parameters here. It's ones that are awaiting information. Um, they're open and they've been labeled for teaching and learning. So whoever added it, put the label on it to have the teaching and learning group look at it, provide some input. Okay. So, these, so me, these are not necessarily, they haven't been developed yet. In most cases, these are just feature requests that people would like to see. 
Okay. So I, I, I probably, I added one the other day. I probably didn't put it as teaching. Oh wait, yeah, it is like we're teaching and learning. There it is. TL quarterly grades in the grade book of uh, four, nine, okay. one, two, nine. That's okay. actually one that I put out there. It deals with our K-12 um, client that would like to be able to, you know, right now it's a, a overall course grade, but it'd be great to have a feature to uh, be able to define quarter grades. All right. So what's the number again? I just opened that one up to. Yeah. And I probably have it put, I, I don't, you know me, I'm not very good on this JIRA stuff, but it's 49129. 49129. Gives us something to talk about at least. Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. So this is a, uh, a feature request from Jeremy. Would it be possible to develop the ability for a gradebook to have a column or an option to calculate quarter grades over a defined period of time? Of course, as a year long, can there be a function to track grades separately for defined quarters and then combine the quarters for an overall? Okay, um, so do you want to give us a little bit of a you know, context around this, how people are using it, where you've seen it, who's asking for it, that sort of thing. Yeah, so I, I, I'll do the best I can, Ms. Wilma. So we have a K-12 charter school that is using Sakai. And um, what they're wanting to be able to do, uh, we, we have set up, uh, say, an English course for eighth grade. Um, and they give quarter report updates. And so as it currently stands, this eighth grade English course is a year long course. So all of the content is hosted in that single course instance, but they would like to be able to do progress reports every quarter, every nine weeks, whatever their, their quarter breaks are. And so there's not a way to identify that to be able to get a quarter grade calculation. So <clears throat> wanting to be able to do that, be able to maintain those grades in there, but then also be able to start a quarter two, a quarter three, a quarter four, and then take those four quarter grades and combine them for an overall course grade. I don't know if that helps or not. But. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, other folks on the call, do you guys, would your institutions find that interesting or is that something that's kind of a unique use case? You know, it could also work in a semester scenario, right? And of course, I mean, I guess you get a snapshot, um, but it could be something, you know, that can be done along that line as well, I would think. I know I've seen, um, and in fact, I think there was a, a lightning talk or a presentation, I want to say last year, at um, either the virtual conference or SakaiCon, I forget which one. Um, talking about midterm grades, where they did kind of a midterm snapshot grade. Um, so it's not quarters, but if it was flexible enough, they could use it for midterm as well. Yeah, the issue, of course, with that, I think, you know, they're doing a combined grade. So it'd be, you know, in a K-12 instance, you know, students receive, a, you know, a grade. You know, they might get an F in the first nine weeks but it doesn't it, it's not aggregate for the second nine weeks where you take that f and their a and now they're at a c you know they usually have a, a second uh, semester or second quarter overall grade so they might have an f in, in quarter one but they might have a b in quarter two but it might average out to where it's a you know a, a c minus or something along that line but yeah, but it would still numerically it would still work out the same, right? As a, I think so. As work, uh, like yeah, overall, of course, this particular instance it has some very unique uh, grading challenges, but that's not for the entirety of the, of the community. But just having a feature to be able to maybe calculate various columns, even if there could, you know, you could take the dates to say between this date range and this date range, what is my average score? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would require each of the items in the gradebook to have a date associated with them. They're not always. So. Correct. So if an institution wasn't wanting to use quarter grades, they would have to take the step further to be able to have a date range. Does that make sense? So uh, if it's a feature that you're wanting to use, you, you've got to identify what is the dates 
for each assignment. So right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting feature idea. Um, there's a. I mean, there's workarounds, but it wouldn't necessarily be as simple as if it were just in the great book as an option. But you could certainly use something like Postum to kind of simulate that idea um, because Postum lets you do what you want with a, a spreadsheet um, upload. So you could define your quarter grades in a spreadsheet and then upload it as part of Postum. Um, but it, again, it wouldn't be as, as, uh, user-friendly, I think, as it would be if it were an option in the grade book. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's see. Jennifer says they don't really do quarter grades. So it looks like Leanne dropped off the call, unfortunately. <laughs> so I see Matt's here. Matt, do you have any feelings one way or the other on quarter grades? Um. At Michigan, I've never heard of this request for um, year-long courses that continue the grades the whole year. So I've never heard of this need. Yeah, and, and you wouldn't in, in a higher ed instance, right? But there are some uses, you know, that Sakai is being used um, in, um, the, you know, the secondary area as well. And it, it is is something that would be a nice feature to have or the option to be able to do something along that line. That's been the hard thing that Sakai is, you know, is developed for higher ed and the K through 12 has really never been a thing um, in the past for Sakai. I don't know if it's you know, on the roadmap for now or in the future, but other, some other LMSs were more geared to K through 12 and they picked up a lot more people for that. So um, yeah, there's a lot of things in K through 12 that are going to be different considerations. That is true. Um, we d we've never had a very strong uh, K through 12 you know, adoption rate. So it is an area that we've targeted specifically, but, but if we do have a client that's interested, I mean, maybe it could potentially be a custom thing that's done locally um, and then contributed back. So depending on if, you know, how motivated your client is and in, in having something like that, it could potentially be scoped out as a custom development project. Yeah. I, I, I doubt that it would um, get a lot of community attention just because it's not a common use case at most institutions in higher ed. I think it might need like a, a separate page in grade book or something. And, um, rather than built into the actual grade book, but I don't know. I don't know how it would happen. I, I know grade book is kind of a special case because of its uh, table layout and stuff. So changing it is not something we've done for quite a while. I don't know. This thing. Right. It, it would kind of like need a full kind of rethink of the UI to incorporate something like this, I think. It wouldn't be something you could just add in there. Right. Well, I will actually, I'm all, after the call, I'm going to go back to that presentation that I'm vaguely remembering <laughs> about midterm grades, because that was something that was of use to, it was a higher ed institution that was using them. So I can't remember what they were, if it was like a SUGI project or something at Dayton, maybe, I, I forget. Um, but, you know, maybe it would be something that, that could be um, kind of tweaked. Um, so I'll go back to that and see if, if, if I have any information for you on it, Jeremy, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, yeah. This, anything with grade book tends to be tricky because it's, it's so central and grades are so important that, you know, it would. I, I can see like how you might do it, but you're gonna, yeah, you'd have to define the grading periods and the quarters mm -hmm. and when they start and end too, uh, you know, we have kind of the terms, but. I don't that those really wouldn't be quite the same and um, yeah i mean like i know individual gradebook entries can have a date associated with them maybe that would be a requirement that each entry each item would have to have a, a date yeah. before you could do anything like this yeah or i wonder could it be not this could it be by date or set up by term 
Well, so, the, the, the class is, is, has only one term. I think you'd have to have it be, have the class have, you know, either multiple terms or multiple grading periods or something at the class level. And then it would maybe have different, different grade books that would be split by, you know, maybe it would split out or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I'd implement this, but that's not, it seems like a, I don't know. Yeah. That is an interesting thought though. I mean, you could in theory do multiple sites, one for each quarter. Right. Which um, it, we, we talked about that with the client, but the issue becomes for them, I guess a little bit of um, problematic for the, the student having so many course sites, um, you know, they, they don't, they're just learning in LMS along that line. But yes, I did present that idea as well, that it could be done as a quarter one site, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Yeah. Um, and they would be able to get a, you know, an overall grade, you know, a grade for each quarter and then be able to take that information and, and aggregate it, you know, to, to a course grade, um, as well. So, I mean, they're, they're just at the beginning stages. Um, you know, they have, have a great view of what they're attempting to do. Um, they, they, they would love to see Sakai adopted over several, uh, K-12 charter schools with Bicronus learning option. Uh, not mm -hmm. only in house, but also remotely as well. Um, so they've got some big visions and some big goals. Um, and, and they might even have some funding. Um, yeah, if, if they have funding, then, you know, that would be great. If it's, if it's something that would, would make Sakai appeal to a whole new market. Um, that's, you know, we could certainly use new adopters. <laughs> Nobody they, can argue they, would that. Like, they think <clears throat> the particular person thinks there's quite a bit of opportunity um, mm -hmm. there, but there is going to have to be some concern with the overall environment inside of Sakai that people are open um, to, to some of those features for that, because mm -hmm. it is been used more in the higher ed environment, um, mm -hmm. understanding that the developers were, were higher ed, the institutions, those that were in the, that were in that higher ed market. Uh, but, you know, that market share, as we all know, is diminishing very, very rapidly. Um, so if we continue to be viable, in my opinion, we've got to look to spread the wings a little bit and, and do some other things. Um, and, and I think that's, that's possible with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, so I, I would definitely, I, I wouldn't discourage you from you know looking into it further i think it, it could be something that might be appealing to folks but i i don't know how much traction it's going to get in just the general community so it might need to be sort of driven by um folks that have a little more of a interest in the future so um, but once it's there it might be appealing to others that's kind of how things happen a lot of times um, if a particular institution really wants a feature and they develop it in-house, sometimes later when they contribute it back to the community code, other people pick it up and say, oh, that's, you know, we, we were looking at something like that. So um, that might be something that would happen. Well, thanks for pre uh, presenting this one as a, a talking point. Um, did you have any other thoughts on it, Jeremy? No, I, I, just I, I do not. Just yeah, whatever you if you find something there for me, willing to take a look at, that might be helpful to kind of see what potential, you know, like yeah. Jennifer's if it's flexible for midterms, could it, you know, be done to change for quarters as well? So that's a you know a great point. So whatever you have there, you know, we can Right. I'll I'll look into that and I'll I'll update the JIRA with whatever I find. Um, so hopefully we can get something to at least give you a little bit of hope <laughs> for, for incorporation in the future. Um, but like I said, there are a few workarounds you could try in the meantime with existing functionality. One would be Postum. So if you haven't played with Postum, I would recommend checking out that tool. And another would be um, you know, separate sites. But um, one thing you might look at actually um, is the, the sub-site option. You can create a site with sub-sites 
um, you know, it's like a parent child relationship. Maybe um, if you're worried about people navigating to different courses, although for students, if a course is unpublished at the end of a term, they shouldn't see it anymore. They should only see the published ones. But um, so, but having subsites means that that kind of ties the navigation together a little bit for the child sections anyway. Um, so that might be another alternative that we could explore to see if that helps with the management of multiple sites if they did want to split it up. Um, so just a couple options there, but I'll look into that midterm thing because I do remember there was something developed somewhere along those lines. All right, thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, any other suggestions for JIRAs that people would like to do? You feel free to, to put them here in the chat or in the, either pad or, in the, or the chat, either one. I'm going to add this one here that we talked about it. Um, I just put one in there. Um, it's 41005. It says, um, please merge. I'm not sure what that means. If that means it's in progress or. Usually if it says, please merge, it means it's uh, there's already a fix um, developed for one version and they want it merged okay. to another version. Um, but let's go take a look at it and see. Yeah, it has to do okay. with rubrics and. Okay. So this so, but is it looks the... like Jennifer, do you want to summarize it for us? Um, yeah, so this is where I believe this is in 23, and we wanted to get it merged back to 22 on using the aggregate rubric score. So each item you can pull the score versus pulling just the entire rubric scores. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So like if someone wanted to analyze just one criteria, they could just pull all those scores and not have to go through each one and look at every one individually by looking right. at the whole rubric. And it looks like UD might have done something for this from the way. Yeah, they created um, they created the um the view export for aggregates. And it is in 23. I don't know if it's easily merged. Yeah, because I think that's what we were waiting on to have it merge back to 22. Otherwise, yeah, we'll have that to wait would, next year. To that get... would probably be an oral question if that can be merged back cleanly. Um, I don't know how many changes there were in the rubrics between your version of 22 and, and 23. Um, if there weren't a lot of major um, changes in rubrics, then it should be able to be merged. But but that would definitely be an oral question. Okay, so maybe I'll just follow up. That was the only one that we had that was kind of a little bit mm -hmm. higher on our list. Yeah, it is very nice to have that option to export those. And if I want to, if I think correctly, I think UD developed it in 22 because they um, weren't on 23, that's for sure. Because um, 23 just came out. So maybe it'll go back cleanly. I'm not quite sure. I don't know, Matt, Matt, if you have any insight into whether or not that's mergeable for 22. I, I don't know. I'd have to try to, then I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's changed in rubrics. Yeah, it says um, on our ticket with long site, it just says they will look into merging it. So I just wondered. I don't right. Know what that's yeah, well, the good news is it already exists. The the only question mark is, you know, how cleanly can it merge yeah. back to your version? So, um. but yeah, that's the only one I think we have that's not almost ready or being worked on. So, I don't know how large it is. I know many many features that have a large UI change are not going to be merged back. Possibly, or it's going to require a lot of work because of the uh, okay, you know the the whole UI change between 22 and 23. So if, if it was going to be done, they'd have to basically do effort to redo the whole UI, all the UI updates that are done. And, um, I don't know how many there are in this. Um, I've seen that with just some simple fixes. We can't get some things back for styling and stuff very easily. We have to do it custom. 
Okay. And this sounds like it's, you know, the two tabs in preview, that's some doing some UI changes. So that's going to be probably be some custom work on top of the merge. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. We may have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. But, but I would definitely ask on, on your next uh, monthly call, see if you can get some more info or in the ticket. Um, if you have a ticket open, maybe Merle can shed some light on that. Right, because of all the, the changes, the move from the Morpheus templates over. Um, they all they all got removed. Yep. Moved around. All right. Um, so any other chairs that people would like to take a look at? Otherwise, we can just kind of go through this list and see if we see any that sound interesting. All right, so I'm just going to pick. Well, that's kind of an older one. Let's pick one that's relatively recent. Okay, so this was created relatively recent, within the last year anyway. All right, so this one, let me go ahead and put it into the other pad. All right, this is a, um, Personalization. Let's see, it looks like Alan reported this one. Um, he wanted to have the option to allow personalization of content throughout Sakai, not just in lessons. So um, for those of you who may know, um, there's an option in lessons. It's a property that you have to turn on, but um, you can have lessons replace um, a token with the user's name. So if you put like in brackets or something, you use your name you know, on a page of content. It'll instead of hello user, it'll say hello Wilma, um, and you know, it'll replace whatever you know, first name, last name, or full name. Um, so this is possible in lessons, but not elsewhere. And it looks like this particular Jira is requesting that we allow that same option to work in other places like the site information display for site info and overview in the assignments area um tests and quizzes and html files generated within resources um, as well as maybe other places um, so what do you guys think about this as a feature request My dog likes it. <laughs> I think it would be great. I mean, I like having it in lessons. It would be nice if you could do it in other places. I don't know um, technically how difficult that would be to implement, but um, but I, I think it would certainly be useful. I see Jennifer typing. Oh, I was talking. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Hello, hello? Yes, we can hear you. You uh, can hear me? Okay. We can hear you. Um, yeah, Jennifer, can you still? Well, let's see, can you hear now? She may have lost her yeah. audio. Yeah, no, she, she just left. Off. Yeah, she dropped off. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Jeremy, what do you think? Would your folks use the personalization thing? I, you know, person? it's probably, probably the only ones that would use the personalization for us would be our higher ed people, um, you know, which, which is diminishing rather, rather rapidly. Um, mm -hmm. So um, 
I mean, yeah, I, I like the idea. I love the personalization. I was on, I forget one of our, our users the other day I was on theirs. I loved it. it popped up, you know, Jeremy it really got, it grabbed my attention. I was like, Oh, mm -hmm. it, it knows me. Uh, <laughs> right. So, you know, I, I think those things are, are good. Uh, and, and I, and I think it is competitive, um, in the market with other LMSs and the things that they're doing. So I mean, it has that personal touch to it. So any, anything along that line, I think is, is worth it. It looks like Jennifer's back. Jennifer, can you hear now? Still doesn't hear anything, huh? Okay. Um, maybe something with your speakers. I don't know. Looks like she's trying to reconnect again. All right, I see just the microphone this time. Change to listen only now she can hear. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, um, for this. I this proposal is cool, but I, I don't I don't know how technically feasible it would be. And if you only have it like working in like say four places, I don't know how people are gonna know. You know, maybe they could look at the help guide and see. Um, like, I didn't even know this was possible in lessons. So, like, I don't know how many people are using this, and I don't know how people would know to use it other places. Is it something that could be added to the rich text editor? Everywhere? Yeah, but that, that would have to be everywhere. And and since every Sakai tool uses, you know, a different template engine, you know, there's Wicked and there's JSF and stuff doing it for every one of those. I don't know how it would do the text replacement for all those, for all the inputted text, you know, globally. I, I don't know how technically feasible that would be. I mean, you could target like specific things, you know, surgically and like say like this box is going to have it and this box is going to have it. And, and But then you'd have like that button appearing in some rich text editors and not others. And I, I don't know. Hmm. It's not actually a button. It's just you, you put the brackets in around the text, kind of like when you do like a fill in the blank question, you know, you, you identify it within the, the question, what the blank is. Right, but um, I was thinking like to make it more obvious to users, you'd have a button in the in the rich text editor, like a drop down, and it would say insert name or insert this, and it would mm -hmm. actually insert the bracket, you know, insert the template part for you. Oh, so, that would be, yeah, that would be a lot easier. Right now, you just kind of have to know that it's there and know how to use it. Right. Um, so it's not very discoverable. Right. Um, but yeah, having a, a drop down insert would certainly be preferable. Then you'd have to target like each area. I think he's like mentioning it, like we had a number of different areas where you, you'd have to like enable that. And uh, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how much effort this would be to do um, across other across other tools. Yeah. Let me, um, all right. Uh, let's see. General support for the idea of having this. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to do on a single tool, like like lessons or like maybe like Wiki supports something similar to this. Um, um, but or even if you want to like do it, like we're going to make assignments through this, but to say. I don't know. You could you could uh, pick one at a time, but you know, eventually people are gonna be like, "Oh, I want discussions to do it too," and then uh, I don't know. Yeah, hang on. And then you'd want to have probably more than just name. You want to identify some other replacements based on the individual. I don't know what lessons allows you to replace right now, but yeah, I think it's like name. Or first name, last name, or full name. I can't remember if email is one of them or not. Hmm. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking email templates let you, lets you do that. But I know that you can choose either first or last name or full name. I think it's neat. Uh, maybe it could be scoped down so that, you know, maybe it would just be a couple places rather than every tool, like it's saying in the description. Um, like I can see like he's, his first bullet point was about site info and, you know, the, you know, the homepage and stuff and 
having it there, I think would have an impact if it had said it like right there, it's kind of like nice, but is it really necessary in testing quizzes and assignments to have that, you know, in there? I don't know to have it in there as something that the, the um, user could edit. I mean, maybe right. it's something, it's something that we want to put in there saying, you know, you know, welcome to your test use, you know, first name, last name or something or something like that. That's, e that's very easy to do versus having a, you know, kind of a template replacement. Right. You know, it's a little wanna... easier because you don't have to know what to type. You just yeah. pick if we If we want to hard code it into the internationalization strings, so we can hard code first name, last name really easy. Um, but yeah, making it a template replacement is more work, especially uh, generically. But I think doing it for a couple tools would be, you know, possible. Yeah. It might have a good impact. Yeah, know. I think so. Yeah. Just making sure people know how to use it. It exists. Yeah, because <laughs> you didn't even know it was there. It's been around for a while. Um, and a lot of people don't know about it because it's not on by default. It's one of those mysterious properties that is there, but you have to enable it before you can actually use it. And most people don't even know to enable it because they don't realize it exists. So um, Jennifer, yeah. it's like I said, it's a property and I don't remember off the top of my head what the, the property is, but I can research that for you if you want. You turn it on and then it becomes an option in the in lessons pages in the rich text editor. You can insert like a, a bracketed name and it'll put the user's name in there instead. Yeah, I think Sakai has a lot of secrets like that and because yeah. they're not exposed in the to the user and the seek editor it would be uh not obvious right yeah if you're interested in having that added to your dev environment just put in a ticket asking for that property to be enabled and um and uh, we'll get that set up for you so you can try it out all right so let's see, it's about a quarter of, um, we could do another JIRA or we can talk about future meetings, which would you guys prefer to do? Hey, you well, yeah, I did step away just for a brief moment. I, I was curious. Did you say that there was a property that could be turned on in order to be able to make the name appear? I, how, yes. how that, can you show that to me? uh i have to go look for it i don't know it off the top of my head it's a property that you turn on on the server um it's a part of that sakai properties file um and it allows you to insert like the the token for the user's name um in lessons it only works in lessons but you have to enable the property first before it'll let you do it okay so it's not a CSS. I thought it was a CSS code. No, no, it's not CSS. It's a property they actually turn on um, on that, that particular instance. And once it's enabled, then you can go into lessons and uh, and enter the username. I think actually I can show you an instance where we have it, if I recall correctly. Huh. So that, that was new to me too. I think Matt said, was it Matt that was saying that too? I thought it was a CSS coding issue. Yeah, it, no, may it's not. it may already be. Okay, turned here. On. This is our demo server where we have it turned on. And oops, sorry. And you'll see here, um, see where it says welcome Trudy? Yes. Trudy is the name of my demo instructor for this course. Um, so what I did was in um, in lessons, I put within brackets first name. So it's going to replace that token with the user's first name. It pulls that from the roster. Um, so, uh, or the user account rather. So yeah, anywhere in lessons you can do that, but you can't do it in other places, but you have to have the property enabled first. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yep. So it has to be that double bracket. Mm hmm. Yeah. Looks like it's this uh, lesson builder dot personalize dot text. Oh, good. You found These it. are the yeah. values you can use so far. Yeah, first name, last name, full name. So it has to be first name, 
or last name or you know their full name depending on what you want to appear on the page so what was in that bracket you had inside the bracket you do what again if you look in the chat in big blue button you'll see matt pasted it in there oh okay cool yeah that's also um that's the property jennifer that you want to ask them to turn on for you in the ticket um, if it's not already turned on so depending which of those you pick so if it's just first name it would say hello wilma if it was first name or I'm sorry, if it was full name, it would say, hello, Wilma Hodges. Or if it was just last name, it would be, hello, Hodges. So you choose which of those you want to appear. It's already turned on in hours. Okay, good. I you just tested it. it. Yep, so you're good to go. You can already use it. <laughs> I didn't even know that existed. Well, good. You learned something today. That's, that's, that's always teaching, nice. teaching and learning, right? So yeah, it, yeah. you were successful today. Mark this one down as a success. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We've only got about 15 minutes left. I say we go ahead and um, move on to, to looking at some upcoming meetings. Unless there's another. Oh, did you want to look at that one, Matt? No, that was where it was. It, that was where it was added back in 2017. Yeah, Sakai, I know. There's Sakai some, 12. Like, there's a lot of, like, probably. Yeah, stuff there's, in some, Sakai. there's some old yeah. stuff hanging around <laughs> that yeah. people don't know about. Um, a lot of properties that were added way back. And uh, yeah, people yeah. don't really know that they're there. But some of those should probably be just defaulted to be, you know, to true or whatever if people are using it. But I don't think that one, I think that one's turned off by default. So, yeah. Yeah, one of these days we should probably go down the list and see which of those kind of uh, hidden properties should actually be turned on yeah, so that people I, know that they exist. I think they should either be turned on or removed if people are not using them and they're broken because they're not testing the stuff that's turned off and right. put QA on them. That's very true. All right, so unless anybody has a JIRA that we like to talk about right now, um, let's uh, go ahead and move on to looking at the upcoming schedule. So um, we this is our second meeting this month, so we won't meet again in August. So our next meeting will be September 6th. Um, does anybody have an idea for something that they would like to talk about that day? It could be just a, a topic for discussion. It could be a presentation. Maybe we ask somebody to come in and talk about something. Um, but uh, if we don't want to just use JIRAs, we should try to line a few things up. So any thoughts? Nobody has any um, wish list items. All right, well, let's just go through the calendar then. Um, so we've got two meetings in September and then another two in October that we need to fill. Um, in November, we'll meet the first of the month, but then on the 15th, since that's the day that we're tentatively planning for SVC, we probably won't meet on the 15th. Um, and then likely our last meeting of the year will be on December 6th because December 20th, a lot of people have already like started to go into vacation mode at that point. Um, so a lot of times we cancel that last meeting of the year um, because of end of term and wrapping up and holidays and, and whatnot. So, um, so that we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six slots to fill. And like I said, we can always default back to JIRA's um, if we don't have a speaker or a topic, um, but if you guys have thoughts on things that you would like to discuss. Um, okay, I see something from Jennifer, maybe something on 23 since it has a new UI. That's a great idea. So you want to, uh, let's see, um, new UI and 23. We can just take another look at it, just kind of get people's feedback and sort of highlight some of the things that have changed. So we can do that next time. Um, 
other thoughts? I wonder if maybe we want to take a moment to look at the properties. We were just talking about that, that there's a lot of things turned off by default. Um, maybe we can look at some of the properties and what they do and decide, at least from this group, whether we recommend those be turned on by default or at least turned on so that people know about them. I think reviewing the properties would be good, but I feel like it's something that would take a lot of a lot more time than an hour. But I don't know. Well, we, we could, could start, start. Uh, over multiple meetings, but yeah, it's yeah. We could start, see how far we get, and then maybe take it up the next time. Um, Jennifer's asking, were there any well attended sessions that might be fun to talk about? Um, there were quite a few well attended sessions. Um, we could certainly revisit some of those. Um, Maybe I'll ask I'll ask some of the presenters. I don't want to put someone down just yet. I'll leave October 4th open in case we decide to take up Sakai properties again um, for two meetings. We'll just kind of play it by ear. Um, but then maybe we'll try to see if we can get some of our SakaiCon folks to expand on their sessions a little bit. Um, all right. Any other thoughts from anybody else on, on topics that you'd like to see? Okay, um, so I guess we'll wrap up a little bit early. You'll get um, eight minutes back in your day. <laughs> so um, hopefully uh, you'll have enough time to have a break before your next thing, whatever that is, if maybe that's lunch. But um, so thank you guys for attending today. And I will see you on September 6th. Have a great day. Thanks.